Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's Vortex University webinar. The topic we'll cover today is uh, Vortex Earthwork Systems, and uh, my name is Jean-Pierre Picard, Product Marketing Manager at SEM Labs, and I'll be your host today. With me on the line is Daniel Hulls, Simulation Specialist, who will handle most presentation duties and uh, the uh, live demo portion of uh, today's presentation. So. Before we get started, I just want to uh, go over what Vortex University is for those of you that are joining us for the first time. Vortex University is a monthly webinar series in which uh, we dive into a single simulation topic. Last month's topic was uh, cable simulation. This month we're talking about the earth moving simulation. And next month we'll talk about uh, the transformation of uh, 3D CAD assets into uh, Vortex mechanism. So these sessions provide you with a chance to interact with uh, CM Labs simulation experts. If you want to keep track of the upcoming sessions, simply click on the link that you see on the, the screen right now, and we'll also send a link in the follow-up email provided after this session. We'll also include a copy of today's webinar, which we are recording in uh, the uh, email we'll send. This email should be sent tomorrow or Monday at the latest. So today's presentation uh, will cover uh, the uh, different capabilities of Vortex Circle Systems, from equipment creation to at uh, formable terrain addition and scenes, and also uh, soil utilities, which have uh, which uh, provide you with the capabilities to transform uh, collision geometries into actual uh, hoppers. So we're going to go over to all of these into a uh, few different sections. Um, we'll start by talking about the uh, theory behind uh, vortex earthwork systems. After that, we'll look at basic uh, tools and earth moving zones. And then we'll look at some of the new features that were added with Vortex 6.6, uh, namely soil layers and earthworks utilities. We'll finish this presentation with a live Q&A, but if at any time during the presentation you wish to send us a question, simply use the uh, questions box on the right-hand side of the uh, GoToWebinar interface. You can also download the presentation materials and the earthworks data sheet under the handout uh, box. All right. So for those of you that are not as familiar with uh, Vortex, uh, Vortex is a real-time simulation and visualization platform. It's used for anything from virtual prototyping, testing a uh, system of systems with operator in the loop, to operator training and operational planning. Uh, it's been deployed by hundreds of customers worldwide in all of these applications. Today, we'll be using the Vortex Editor uh, desktop application. The Vortex Editor is the creation and validation application of uh, Vortex Software Solution. It allows you to create your scenes, your mechanism, and deploy them on a desktop simulation environment. So without further waiting, let's get into uh, today's topic, uh, Vortex Earthworks. And we'll start with an overview of the uh, theory behind the, uh, the system. Daniel? Yeah, so uh, the Vortex Earthwork Systems module is one of many modules that you can purchase with the uh, Vortex uh, simulation um, product. Uh, so we have also vehicle systems and cable systems and also simulation of uh, oceans in the marine module. <clears throat> so today we're going to focus on the Earthwork Systems module. Um, the general idea behind the uh, Earthwork Systems module I'm going to present to you here in, in, uh, in a few slides. Um, uh, essentially, one of the biggest challenges in doing soil simulation for real-time uh, virtual training and design is that you have very limited time to do it. So at 60 hertz, you usually have a budget of about 5 to 7 or 10 milliseconds if you take out all the time spent for doing collision detection with other entities uh, and the general uh, visualization in your scenario. So what we decided to do is to use an, a hybrid and adaptive approach, which um, adaptively introduces particles only where needed. So when you uh, create starting soil flow with your cutting tool, particles will be generated uh, at runtime and when they start settling they will be reintegrated into a grid. So this combines a mesh-free particle-based method with a grid-based simulation method which is really great because this way we can um, benefit from the strength of both of these models. So we can simulate dynamic soil as particles and static soil very efficiently as, as a grid. So 
all in all, that gives us a very good balance between performance, realism, and stability. As you can see here in that video, we are also tracking the compaction degree of the particles at runtime so that the fidelity of the simulation uh, where compression, compression and compaction of soil matters is also captured in our simulations. So <clears throat> when you are an operator uh, uh, in, a, in a simulator, you can do any sorts of operations, obviously. Um, you can compact uh, soil, cut soil, you can swing, uh, you can dump soil that is in the bucket. And in all of these situations, in order to provide a realistic training and design environment, um, the simulation engine has to provide proper force feedback on blades and buckets. So what we're doing is we um, use different te techniques in Vortex which uh, benefit from the core SDK, SDK functionalities such as contacts and uh, particle systems in order to add the forces required when cutting soil to the bucket and blade. So as you see here depicted in this picture, we have particle forces that are added to the bucket when cutting. Uh, the, the grid adds forces in terms of the constraint um, which represents the uh, shear strength uh, of, and of the uncut soil and the particles also add surcharge forces in front of the blade which will make it harder when you accumulate more particles and more soil mass in front of you in a bulldozer and you want to continue advancing with your machine. So um, Vortex Earthwork Systems provides a few convenient uh, presets that allow you to simulate different types of soils. So we uh, provide clay, sand, loam, and gravel. And each of these soil types uh, have an effect on the shear strength of the material, the compressibility, and the soil particle dynamics. Um, one of the very important emerging behaviors that we can also capture in simulation, as you can see here, is the angle of repose of loosely poured material. Um, Furthermore, when you start pushing with your bucket into the soil, you get certain elastic and plastic strains, and those differ from, from type to type of material. The visual aspects of, obviously also are very important in an earthwork system simulation. So um, we use mostly the basics of graphics materials, which is a um, established concept in Vortex, uh, where you can set up diffuse, specular, and normal maps. Um, and we combine those with specialized uh, simulation um, techniques in order to visualize soil in, the, uh, in a natural way. A height field uh, will be able to display a deformed soil texture when you start digging into it or when you, when you dump material on it. Uh, and the soil particles are represented as 3D models. And when you start cutting or when you dump material, you will see dust clouds arising and additional particle spray effects that uh, will emit particles from the bucket while the soil is leaving the bucket. Thank you. Now, before we get into the live demos, I'd like to go over the uh, different building blocks of uh, Vortex Earthwork System. The first one I'd like to talk about is soil bins. So what soil bins are is uh, they're basically containers that you can use to create non-diggable earthwork zones. For example, a truck bed. It allows you to add uh, a, um, a section in your mechanism that supports uh, soil dumping and digging. So when you add those, uh, such as seen in the video here, your, uh, your truck will now be able to receive soil that is dug up by the second type of uh, building block I want to talk about, which is the earth moving bucket. The bucket is mod modeled around an earth moving excavator's uh, standard bucket. It provides a, diff a few different parameters to uh, define how it uh, interacts with the soil. And what it does is it tracks the amount of uh, soil that was dug up and can then output it as a payload when you uh, deposit it in a uh, soil bin. There is another earth moving tool that is available to be added to mechanism and that is the generic blade. The generic blade is a um, is based on user provided geometry and it allows you to push um, to push soil around. It doesn't track the uh, payload of uh, of uh, soil that is pushed around because it does not carry it inside uh, its container. Now this was for the uh, uh, the uh, different uh, tools you can add to mechanism. To scenes, you can add earthwork zones, and earthwork zones are where you can actually uh, interact with the terrain, create the formable terrain. And you'll, uh, as we'll see in the live demo in a second, uh, you define the height field, and then your zone can receive soil particle and can uh, be integrated with terrain graphics. So we're going to move on to our first demo, which is adding an earthwork zone to a uh, vortex scene. 
And for this, I will pass the control to Danielle. Yeah, thank you, JP. Um, yeah, so as um, Jean-Pierre already mentioned, um, you can add earthwork zones to uh, existing scenarios in order to enable the digging uh, and deformation of soil. Um, and here I have uh, loaded a scene where you have some terrain already pre-created um, with a couple of props, some cones that define the area in which we want to dig. And uh, so now I'm just going to add an earthwork zone in that area. So you navigate to your terrain and you do a right click and you simply say add earthwork zone. And that's already enough. So now you have the earthwork zone appearing and you can conveniently position it by moving the dynamics component <coughs> into the desired area using the 3D manipulator tools and you can scale it as well to your liking. So it covers the appropriate area in which you want to dig. So that's it. Now, uh, also we want to be able to dig in it. So there is a differentiation between dig zones and dump zones. If you tag the diggable parameter, now you can define some compaction, a compactness degree, which is here termed in, uh, um, represented as initial relative density. So we leave it like this and we'll choose a material that exists in our material table as for all other collision geometries in in a vortex simulation. So now if you start the simulation, you will see that actually you see nothing and that is absolutely expected because what you do not see here right now is the dynamics representation, the height field that is created. So this one has now just been created by the earthwork zone and so we're just a few clicks away from also seeing a visual representation of this. So let's look at the graphics component. So I'm gonna stop the simulation again and I select the graphics component. And here you see, as I mentioned, that you can select a graphics material. Graphics materials, they come in a vortex in, in, in the form of graphics galleries. So here I have a graphics gallery that I added to my scene, and I have a um, appropriate graphics material, which you can see here. And now I'm just gonna go back to my graphics component. I will select it and use an appropriate texture scaling factor. Also, you can use terrain upscaling, which will use, multi, uh, use subdivisions in order to create a smoother graphical look on top of the dynamics. And there are some parameters that allow you to fine tune the blending between the original terrain and the terrain visualization that will now be embedded when I start the simulation. So as you can see now, you see this white outline here. This is still the collision geometry that I have displayed. So I'm gonna turn that display off and this is now the final result. Um, as you can see, you have the height field, which is now not visible anymore um, because it was uh, smoothly and um, um, seamlessly embedded into the original terrain surface. So now in order to dig in there, I'm just gonna add uh, an excavator. Let's do this. Add mechanisms from file. And here it is. So now this excavator was already pre-configured with um, earth moving tools. So it has a generic blade that you can see right here and a excavator bucket that was already predefined. I'm, I'm just gonna position it appropriately. something like this. And if now I start my simulation, it falls a little because I position it too high. Now I am already able to dig, as you can see here. So you see that all the dust effects and so on, they are automatically created, but this is only because I already pre-configured the the components and selected uh, proper 3D models for the soil particles. Now, the last thing that I'm gonna do here is I'm also gonna add a, a dump truck, which was also pre-configured. So I add another mechanism. I'm gonna navigate to the, to the dump truck. And this one I'm gonna place close by. 
so that I can dump some soil in there and you will see that this also works as expected. So this one has a soil bin that is also defined by a bounding box which is carefully placed at the um, on the rim of the um, dump truck bed and now if I start the simulation you will see that I can now deposit some soil inside this truck. Picking a nice scoop. So I'm going to deposit it here. Also there, there is a dust effect and you see that a little heap of soil now appeared here. And so this uh, truck could be completely filled. It also has a output uh, which provides you the payload, which you can see here. So now there is 1.5 tons of soil already in and uh, that concludes the first part of the demo. Thank you, Daniel. So the next section, oops. The next section we're going to uh, look at is uh, soil layers. Soil layers is a new feature that was added to Vortex in uh, version 6.6, which was launched uh, this winter. And uh, what they uh, allow you to do is they allow you to add a bit more uh, granularity to the um, compaction levels of, uh, of uh, earthwork zones, but also to add more earth moving uh, elements in the, the, uh, the scene, more deformable terrain elements. So I will uh, pass the control to Daniel, who will present uh, how this uh, functions. Yeah, all right. So um, as JP said, this is a feature that was added in Vortex 6 and uh, it allows you to add soil to uh, earthwork zones and to soil bins. So what you can do with this is you can, for example, fill uh, a dump truck, like we saw in the demo, the dump truck was initially empty, but you could add some soil inside of it right from the at, at the simulation start. Um, this is one of one of the examples here. The other thing you can do is you can place a pile of soil uh, on an earthwork zone, or the, and this is very interesting, you can define a compaction profile. Each soil layer is defined by a geometry, which is here depicted in the dashed, in dashed uh, lines. And uh, this uh, surface of this geometry defines the top, uh, the top of the soil layer. If you, you can stack them on top of each other and uh, assign different compaction degrees to all of them so that you can really have, for example, a, a hard crust at the top and then some softer soil below or vice versa. Also, you can define a hard rock layer here depicted uh, as a circle, uh, which we will use also in the demo in order to place a concrete pipe uh, underneath the uh, surface of the terrain. So this is a new thing that was added also with 6.6. We have now the ability to display the uh, layers that are created in a zone. Um, the coloring is uh, defines the compaction degree. Uh, light green defines very loose compaction and uh, dark blue defines very high compaction. Um, and uh, I will demonstrate this in the live demo later on as well. All right. So speaking of demo, let's just switch back to the demonstration uh, to the editor to uh, see how Solar work in action. Daniel. Yeah. Thanks, JP. So here I have already preloaded uh, a scene which contains the two equipments that I added earlier. Um, and now you already know the basic concepts here and now I'm going to show you how to add a, a little soil pile on this earthwork zone. Like if I start the simulation now, you will see that um, there is nothing, nothing yet. You only have the truck and the excavator. Um, and now I'm going to show you how easy it is to uh, using the soil layer functionality to add a soil pile. So here you see uh, a specialized mechanism which uh, was created which was created just for the purpose of creating a pile. Uh, you can use any type of uh, geometry in order to define soil layers. So this one here, I'm going to uh, deselect it so that it's better visual. This is a bunch of boxes which are all uh, composited together in one composite collision geometry, as you can see here. And now I'm simply going to create a soil layer that will add a soil that has a shape that uh, looks uh, similar to this arrangement of boxes. What will happen is the height field will uh, be sampled uh, using these 
box geometries as an input. But as I said, you can use any type of geometry. So this could also be a triangle mesh. So now I just created, I want to redo this actually, I'm, I will create the soil layer conveniently from this uh, earthwork systems drop down uh, right here. And now the only thing I need to do is I need to select a soil surface collision geometry uh, just like this. I'm selecting the composite collision geometry and I use some different relative density than I have in the earthwork zone which is 50 so here I'm using 10 and now when I start the simulation you will see that a pile of soil appears exactly where these boxes were placed so this is where the boxes were you see that the shape doesn't match exactly anymore this is because the soil eroded um, I'm going to show you some more about this later on in, uh, in the, the rest of the demo. Um, to show you the, uh, the new accessory that I mentioned on the, on the uh, earthwork zone, you can navigate to the dynamics component of the earthwork zone and here on this uh, eye icon you select accessory and now you'll see at runtime uh, the soil layers which are um, visualized here using lines. Okay, so this pile of soil has a very low compaction degree compared to the rest, so it's very greenish. And now if I start digging, you will also see that uh, the material that I start digging up will, when it accumulates, form small looser piles. So this is because we're tracking the compaction degree throughout the simulation. So I can turn the accessory here off and show you another accessory, which is the uh, accessory of the particle system. This is here under soil particles. The dynamics component has also an accessory field. So now if I'm going to take a little scoop right here, let's say, I have to deselect it, you'll see that uh, you also see the same kind of coloring appear. And if I pause the simulation, you can observe this in a bit more detail. Oops, sorry. Um, essentially, what you get here is that uh, everything that is very compact will have a very high compaction degree associated. This is the blue particle right here and everything that is loose around it will have a lower compaction degree. So if I continue the simulation you will see that ultimately everything settles again and was transferred to the grid. Now, so now we put a soil pile uh, on an earthwork zone but let's try to do the same thing with the, with the truck bed. So the truck bed initially is empty. We saw this earlier on. So now the only thing I need to do is I need to also add some geometry in there and define a soil layer. So what I, I'm going to do is copy paste the soil pile that I already had earlier. Give it a more descriptive name. And I will create another soil layer. Together with the pile. And now I'll take the soil pile and I'll move it simply to coincide, to overlap with the um, truck bed. So this is this here. So I'm going to carefully position this inside the truck, lower it a little bit so it doesn't overflow right from the start. Like this, maybe a little bit to the right. So, and now if I select this geometry in my new layer, like so, and here I will leave the relative density a little bit higher and I start the simulation, you will see that now you also have some soil that appears right, si right inside this truck. And you see this unnatural shape. This comes because from the unnatural collision geometry that we chose to initialize the soil. Um, so the height fit really just samples the, the collision geometry that you give it in its own parameter space. But now something that is really convenient that you can do uh, in order to simulate um, so soil that has a bit more, um, uh, like less, soil st less slope stability and that erodes a little bit more, you can simply use a new input in the soil bin and earthwork zone uh, in order to reduce the shear strength uh, of the soil and make it erode. And I'm going to show you this right here. So this is a shear strength parameter which I exposed via a VHL interface. Actually, it is part of the truck bed that you see right here. The Dynamics truck bed has exactly this input which now is linked to the VHL interface and now I'm going to use that at runtime uh, in order to make the soil flatten out just like this. So you can dynamically change it. So if now I change it back to let's say 20% the, 
this would be a st stable slope for a 20% strong soil. Um, and that's, that's it. That's really interesting. You can, for example, simulate mud with this, or you can simulate uh, other material like concrete, things like this, if you want to model a concrete pump. So the last thing that I'm going to show you here in this demo is how to embed a static object, again, with the use of soil piles, uh, soil layers, sorry. So um, conveniently, we have some sewer pipes lying around here. So I'm just going to copy paste one of those. And I'm going to move this underneath the zone, like here. somewhere close so that I don't need to dig too far in order to dig it up. <clears throat> so that looks about right. So this is embedded in the soil, not too deep so that I don't need to dig too much to demonstrate this. And uh, so now if I would just start the simulation, what would happen is that the soil volume would overlap with this um, concrete pipe, which is obviously not the case because there is a cavity here. So what I will do is I will simply create yet another soil layer and I will select this the collision geometry of this pipe as that layer and then we'll set it up as a non-diggable hard rock bottom surface. So creating another soil layer. This one is the pipe. This is our pipe here. And in that soil layer I'm simply untagging the diggable flag, in which case the density disappears as well because there is no actual soil there anymore. It's just um, unpenetratable um, surface. So and now as the soil surface here that defines the, the layer surface, I will select the concrete cylinder like this. And now if I start the simulation, that's one it's going to be a bit hard to see, but uh, if I turn on the um, accessory of the zone, you can see that, it's the other way around, you can see that actually there is now a hole, but there are no layers right below this concrete pipe. I can also maybe quickly move it a little bit to the left, then it becomes more obvious. So I just move this thing a little bit to the left so that it sticks out. Like this, it's just sticking out. If I start now again, You'll see that with the uh, accessory again turned on. See that really here there is no soil. Oops, sorry, in that area. Okay, so the soil layers accumulate on top, as you can see here. I'm gonna get, go a little bit closer in. So there is some soil on top. So this I will now have to remove in order to dig down and to um, make this concrete pipe appear uh, from the perspective of the excavator. So let's try that. Turning off the accessory, just so to visualize this a little better, I, I can select this so this way it's transparent. <clears throat> and now if I start digging, you'll see if I don't watch out, I will have really high reaction force. Now I can't continue digging anymore because I'm really colliding with the concrete concrete pipe. So and if I continue, oops, now I put some soil back. Let me try that again. Oops, so there there was, I didn't watch out at all, so I had some really high reaction force there. And you'll see that, ta-da, now I'm actually revealing this concrete pipe right here. I can also let the soil flow now. It will cover it again a little bit. And yeah, so I can really now go in and uh, have a very, very advanced training scenario where the excavator operator would have to watch out not to damage the machine when trying to uncover this uh, concrete pipe right here. And that concludes the demo. Thank you, Danielle. So this brings us to the last portion of today's presentation, which will uh, discuss the um, earthwork utilities that are available with uh, Vortex 6.6. So this is some uh, more advanced uh, matters again uh, some, uh, for uh, some more complex scenarios. So we'll do a uh, demonstration in a few minutes that will show you can use these to simulate a uh, soil hover. But before we move into that, a bit on the different utilities available. Danielle? 
Yeah, thanks. Um, so just going to give you a quick overview of what's available now in Vortex 6.6. Uh, so first of all, you have the soil emitter, which allows you to add um, material to your simulation uh, through an emitter, with, uh, other than using um, a blade or a dig tool and a zone as a s source of your soil. So you can attach this emitter to some moving objects like some uh, concrete pump holes or a funnel and let uh, material appear in your simulation dynamically. Um, alongside with this goes the soil culling geometry which allows you to remove those particles or any other particles that are generated uh, when they touch a certain object. So we're going to use that in the demo uh, later on. If you, if you look at the bottom you see the soil culling monitor uh, which measures exactly the soil mass that is culled by the soil culling geometry. So those two go hand in hand. Uh, on top of this, we have some other interesting tools, for example, culling uh, particles using the dynamic soil materials extension. Here you can remove particles that came to rest somewhere, let's say outside a dig zone, and that just are not relevant to the scenario anymore. When they reach a certain age, a certain lifetime, they will disappear and not overload your system by just lying around there. The, the soil mass sensor is also very interesting. It allows you to measure soil both inside the height field and in, uh, in, shape in, um, in the form of particles inside a, speci uh, a specified bounding box. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate you most of these tools uh, in, a, in a second. So for this last demo, let's go back to the editor. Yeah, so here we have a very simple scene that I created just with a sky dome and a hopper arrangement and uh, the little red thing that you see uh, on top this is a soil emitter so if I select it you can also zoom on zoom in on it using shift F and now you see that the emitter actually has a disk that defines the emission space the emission uh, area in which the particles are generated and a direction so um, also, you have some convenient parameters like the emission frequency and the, the radius of the particles that are emitted and their initial linear velocity. You can also create a, uh, an ellipsoid out of this by just changing those, the, uh, the axes of the disk individually, as you can see here. Okay, so now I'm just going to start by pressing play and seeing what happens. So as you can see now, soil is generated out of this emitter and it started accumulating here on that funnel. So it may look like there is actually uh, no collision geometry here between those uh, in this grate, but actually there is. So the particles, they just accumulate here and they cannot actually pass through the sieve. So how can we turn this into a, a believable funnel system? So for this, we'll use the, um, the, culling, the soil culling geometry. So first I'm going to show you quickly um, how this hopper here is structured. So the hopper has two assemblies, one, um, one which I will highlight right now is uh, everything surrounding this, the, the, the sieve and also the bottom here, okay. And the other part, so we, we didn't uh, go into detail and model these for that test, we modeled the, the ex uh, exact uh, representation of the funnel. Just for demonstration purposes, we limited ourselves to these geometries. And the funnel, if I turn this off, I turn the funnel on, see the funnel that it's, it's the inside uh, of, the, of this funnel, of the hopper, okay? So now, what we'll do is we'll create a um, soil cutting geometry and we'll select this collision geometry here, like this assembly here, in order to make the particles disappear when they hit this um, this grate. So let me just start by going to the Earthwork Systems toolbar, soil culling geometry. It's really easy here. I just select the assembly directly in the editor. Uh, it was the funnel. So I'm just going to give this a more representative name. So this would be that your your operator actually dumped the soil on target. Okay. So now if I start simulating you'll see that the particles that were previously accumulating now, they completely disappear. So, and also if you, if you look closely, I can maybe zoom in here a little bit and pause the simulation, it actually looks like they're really passing through uh, the sieve here, okay? 
So, and this is because when the particles are removed on contact, which is directly when they touch uh, the, the, the surface here, they get, uh, they continue with their last known velocity uh, and also accelerated by gravity and they, their radius is re re reduced to zero until, uh, and then their visual representation disappears. So the dynamics directly disappears, but the visual representation creates this fade out effect, which in this particular case makes for a very nice um, and believable simulation of this funnel here. So now if I move this emitter a little bit to the, to the right, by the way, this can also be done at runtime and you can connect the emitter to other entities uh, using the iMobile interface. You see here uh, as inputs, it has a local and a parent transform. So I could connect its parent transform uh, to some other entity that, and then the emitter would follow this other entity. So now if I start uh, simulating here, you'll see that parts of the material now accumulate here on the side and the other half is actually successfully entering the funnel. Uh, but so how do I, I mean, obviously here this material, uh, how, uh, uh, how do I track this? Because like this is material that the operator dumped outside the target zone. So in your statistics, in order to measure the performance of your operator during the training sessions, it would be nice to, to, to measure this. So for performance reasons, obviously also you don't want too many particles to accumulate. So what we can do is we can simply create another soil culling geometry, just like this which we'll name, oops, spill. So this is what was spilled. And so here we're going to select the other assembly, which is the surrounding hopper geometry. And uh, now if we start simulating again, you'll see that uh, effectively now the particles also get removed when they touch the, when they are outside the target zone. And now in order for the statistics to actually distinguish between what's in and what's out, we can go in and now use this other really convenient tool, which is the soil culling monitor. So the soil culling monitor goes uh, hand in hand with the soil culling geometry, and it uh, you can associate it with spe specific uh, culling events of a, one uh, or more of those culling geometries by using IDs. So here we're just going to use a ID which is spill, spill ID, and in the culling geometry which is named spill, we also use the same ID. So and now if I start simulating, you will realize that this there is a, an output which is the culled soil mass. Now this one inc uh, increases and you see that your operator has now already spilled five tons of soil. So and the same can be done for for the uh, for the for the funnel, everything that goes on target. So I'm going to create another monitor. This one will have the culling ID on target, just as the culling geometry will have the same on target. Now, so now both of those monitors, they have an output. This one has the on target output, which is already at 17 tons. The spill is at four tons. And now if you want, you can also just directly visualize these uh, statistics, these metrics by just simply dragging uh, the uh, outputs into the um, into this plotter here, and then you'll see the amount of spilled versus the amount of of um, uh, unspilled material. And if you want to go one step further, you can also go in and measure the material that is in the air. So, and for this, we are going to use the soil mass sensor. So, um, when I start the simulation, you'll see that there's a lot of material that is in the air, which is not tracked. If in some cases you need to track material that is in the air, that accumulates at some, in some specific region, you can use the soil mass sensor. And the soil mass sensor, I'm going to show it to you right here, is just a little box. So, you can move it to your area of interest. I'm going to move it right below this uh, emitter, like this. And let's enlarge it a little bit so you can use the scaling tool like that. Very convenient. And now if I start emitting, you'll see that it, if I turn the accessory on, you'll see that everything that passes now through will be tracked. And here you have an output which now changes. It also knows how many particles are currently inside here. This is about 500, 450 particles. And uh, so I can measure that one as well. And you'll see that this one is relatively constant, as you can see here, as opposed to the spill, 
which which keeps increasing. So, and that's all for this last demo, and I'm handing back to JP. Thank you, Danielle. So this concludes uh, the um, the uh, presentation for today. Uh, but before we move on to the uh, Q and A, I would just like to uh, go back uh, real quick over what we looked at today. So what we've seen today is how Vortex can uh, not only simulate uh, the formable terrain, but also uh, provides a built-in visualization tool set uh, for the formal the formable terrain simulation. That's really a key element as well because uh, we are doing a real-time uh, earth moving uh, simulation, but we're also providing a way to create interactive simulators uh, with this real-time simulation, which really opens up the, uh, the use cases uh, for it. Uh, whether you want to test the uh, performance of a virtual prototype with uh, an operator in the loop throughout a complete work cycle, or you wish to train uh, earth moving equipment operator, the ability to visualize soil in its different state as you interact with it is really key to uh, taking advantage of real-time uh, deformable terrain simulation. So today's uh, excavator scene is included in the Vortex 6 example. So if you want to go through the different steps we went through today, uh, you can do so with the latest uh, Vortex version. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this session is being recorded and we'll share a copy of the video with you early next week. But you can download the presentation materials on the handout side on the right-hand side. And you can also download the uh, Vortex Earthworks uh, Earthworks uh, data sheet. Now we're going to move on to the uh, Q&A. You can send us our questions using the uh, questions box on the right hand side. Before we move on to the Q&A, just a reminder, we have another webinar in May, uh, on May 5th this time, on the uh, Vortex CAD optimizer add-on. And in there, we will start from a uh, 3D CAD model and transform it into a fully interactive Vortex mechanism. So it'll be a great occasion for those of you who have uh, CAD assets that they're wondering how they could turn into a uh, real-time simulation. Uh, this will provide you with a full overview of the uh, workflow from uh, import to optimization. For those of you who will be leaving us, again, thank you for joining us today. We appreciate your, uh, your presence and we hope you'll join us on May 5th for our next session. We're now going to move to the uh, Q&A.